Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight. Hey guys, Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're talking about the name of our Messiah. Okay. Now, you didn't really want to do this class. You actually been the hold up on this class. Okay. So, we'll make that a part of the class. Why do you, or what what is the hold up? Do you think it's under, what, what is the hold up? I just think there's so much confusion on it. Um, I think that's what my um, if you want to call it hold up was is that there's just so much confusion and um, like we were discussing before um, I think it's unnecessary confusion on the name yeah confusion on the name what is what is the Messiah's name is and you say it's unnecessary um, the confusion is unnecessary because like we were discussing um, my thing is that instead of concentrating on the name, that we should be more so concentrating on the attributes of who he is. Okay, but we get his attributes from his name. That's what we learn from the Hebrew is that the the names in the Hebrew have meaning. Right. And so that kind of lends to why it's important is because that's how we are supposed to get his attributes. That's how we know who he is based on what his name is. I mean, that's the way all of the names work. When you look at names like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those names have meanings. They actually mean something. Well, so does our Messiah's name. Right. Right. I mean, you, you think about it like this. What if there was some s confusion when it came to your name? And let's say your spouse, your husband, your boyfriend, your future mate, whatever, or whoever he is, somehow mistakens your name for, let's say, his ex-girlfriend or your potential rival in this scenario when you guys meet for the first time, instead of him recognizing your name, he calls you by the wrong name. But like I say, your potential rival. How would you feel about that? I um, mean, I don't. I wouldn't like that, of course. But chances are, because he is someone that you love or someone that you care about, you probably won't be so quick to offend him by saying you got my name wrong. Chances are, you may even answer to that name that he's calling you wrongly. But for how long? For forever? Probably so. It kind of reminds me of my aunt named Pam, who we've always called Pat. But it was only, you know, when she was 80 years old that we realized that we were calling her by the wrong name. And when you asked her why she allowed people to call her by the wrong name, she said it didn't bother her. It, that it just wasn't a problem. People calling her Pat when her name turns out to be Pam. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, you know, with the scenario of, you know, my boyfriend calling me, you know, Melissa, and my name is Tracy. Uh, I don't know if I would necessarily not say anything with that scenario, but I definitely understand what, you, understand what you're saying. Well, that's the case with our Messiah and his name. Turns out there has been some confusion, intentional or not. We have given him the name of his rival. When you say the name J-S-U-S, -S, you're actually speaking about a false god. That's where the, that S-U-S on the name comes from is actually hailing one of their Greek gods. If not, there are most powerful Greek gods, the top of their Greek god, god list. Every time we think we're calling the name of our Messiah by saying the word J-E-S-U-S, we're actually calling on a mythological God, a pagan God. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like being in a relationship with your future husband who is calling you Melissa, who is the name of his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. How long do you know we call you Melissa, call her Melissa. 
you know, do the children end up calling her Melissa, the grandchildren, is the neighbors? How long are we going to go calling her by the rival's name before we think it's important to actually figure out, OK, well, what actually is her name? What is her name? What is her right name? Right. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, at some point we realize that your name is not Melissa, that that's actually the name of your rival. So what do we call you then? Once we realize that Melissa is wrong, just like we realize that J-E-S-U-S is the wrong name, we shouldn't be calling him that. Nobody who is thinking on the matter should ever use that name again. Right. So what do, what name do we call? What name do we use? Well, you would automatically go and start using the name that she was given. Um, if her name is Tracy... Call her Tracy. If her name is, you know, whatever, you would call her that name, right? So it's important to actually get her name right then after we realize that we've been calling her by the wrong name. So now then it is important to actually get her name right or else we're going to be calling her by some other name that we made up. Mm -hmm. Some other name that is not quite right, like you said, is not the name that she was given. We're just going to call her by some different name. Well, when it comes to our Messiah's name, that's exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. When we realize that J-E-S-U-S is wrong, we start coming up with other names that are also wrong. Names that are not what he was given. Names that are not scriptural. Names that somebody came up with as a good idea, potentially for his name. And, you know, it felt good to us so we decided to just use that name like for instance what's another what's another name if his name is not j-e-s-u-s what name could you use to refer to our messiah um you know i've heard several names um trying to think i've heard yashu yah yahusha i have heard um amashiach i have heard you know Yasan, um, I think those are the three that I have heard other than, you know, J-E-S-U-S. Well, when you were referring to him, what name do you use? What name do I use is nine times out of ten, I'm going to say the Messiah, like when I do with all my readings. Um, lately, I have, um, have said the um, Hamashiach, um, but those are the two that. I, I use. Now you realize that those are not names. Well, absolutely. They're actually just titles. Right. Mm -hmm. Messiah. He, anybody can be a Messiah. Right. You know, it's just a question of which Messiah right. do you choose? Some right. Messiahs will, you know, lead them in the wrong direction. Whereas there's one Messiah that will lead towards salvation. Same way with Christ. Turns out that that is actually just a word used for Messiah. They right. just replaced the word Messiah with the word Christ. But it's just saying that he is the Messiah. It's not necessarily his name. Absolutely. So yeah. as far as his name is concerned. I don't have a name for him. I don't think I I don't think I have given a name uh since um I stopped using J-E-S-U-S. -S. So you stop using J-E-S-U-S. -S right. Because you realize that it's talking about the wrong person. It's calling on the wrong person. Mm -hmm. So you tried to stop using that word. But what word do you use now? I, the, I don't. I don't use a particular name. As you said, I use a title. And you use a title like mm -hmm. Lord or Messiah or Christ or mm -hmm. so. What we want to talk about in this class was what is his name? Right. What, what is the name that he was given? Mm -hmm. What name did they call him? You know, when he was walking around the streets of Jerusalem in the flesh, when people saw him, what did they call him? What did they holler out? Say, hey, there's our Messiah. Well, they didn't use there's our Messiah. What did they use? What did they say? Turns out it's actually in the scripture what name they actually called out when they called out to him 
the name is actually in the scripture on what name they use, not, you know, what we've come up with since then, you know, and all of our biblically scholastic endeavors, you know, to come up with all kinds of ideas for what his name is. There's actually a biblical reference for how the common man, the people called him, what they called him to his face, what they, when they was to say, Hey, you come over here. What name did they use? Yeah, because they would have had a, you know, a relationship with him. You know, from my understanding, all the disciples, you know, you just don't walk up on somebody and say, follow me. Um, I'm thinking they probably knew him or even knew about him. So one thing for sure is that his parents did give him a name. Yeah. And well, the thing about it, they knew him from his childhood. Everybody knew his story. Right. You know, a lot of people didn't believe in his story, but they at least had heard about this child who was born under these miraculous conditions who, mm -hmm. who had been doing all of these miracles and all of these miracles had been, you know, surrounding his entire life. So they already knew who he was, you know, and like you said, they would have had to have some name for him to go by. Well, in this video, we're actually going to talk about what that name is looking in scripture, starting in Matthew chapter one which we've talked before. You've mentioned the name that we've mentioned on this channel and that's your son. Well, that's a start to what his name is, but it's going to turn out. We're going to find out here that that's not actually what they called him. It's a little bit closer, a whole lot closer than where we were, but it's not actually hitting the mark. We wouldn't have, they wouldn't have recognized that name. He, he may not have even answered that name if we had called him by that name back in the day. So the first thing we're going to do is look in Matthew chapter one at when we see the Messiah's name being used. And I think I'm going to get a different translation than this King James version. Hold up. We'll look here in the CJB Bible or the complete Jewish Bible, which doesn't use the J S U S word but the word that they use there we're going to find out it's not his name he uses the word yashua there when we're looking at the concordance we see the name or the number 2424 for our messiah's name we see 2424 in the bible 923 times but notice how it's three different words that are actually being used one word seems to have 462 times that it's being used. Another one is 129 and another one is 132 times for the same word. 24 Greek number 24, 24 has three different ways of actually saying it or writing it. Mm -hmm. Now, the first way that we see it being used the 332 times it has no consonant at the end of it. You see the I and the E was mixed the yay sound or ya or yay, however you want to say it. And then you have the S. So you have yes or yas. And then you have the OU at the end, which would be like sure or, sh or sha or so that's where you people get the word yasha from whereas the time that is used the most in the bible there's the s sound at the end so you have this oos sound at the end of the word that's used 462 times but the least amount of times that we see his name spelled it has the n sound at the end like sun mm -hmm. so instead of sus it's sun but you say, well, which one is correct? Mm -hmm. Well, the word that doesn't have the usage or the times that it's used where it doesn't have a consonant at the end, where there's no S sound or no N sound at the end. We see that in Matthew chapter one and verse one, when it's talking about the genealogy of the Messiah. And then we see 
and again down in verse 18 where it's talking about the birth of the Messiah and then we don't see it again until chapter 2 when we do the same thing and look at the oos sound at the end the first time we see it mentioned is in verse 16 of chapter 1 when it's talking about the Messiah being born and then we don't see that oos sound or that oos word again until chapter 3 but then when we look at the spelling with the end sound at the end, as in Yasun, we notice it in verse 21 when it's talking about his name. Also in 25, when it's talking about his name. So what his actual name was in verse 21 is what the angels told Mary and or Joseph what his name would be. And in verse 25, we see what they actually named him. And it's the word with the end sound at the end. So in other words, the other two ways of spelling it are actually not what his name is. His name or the name that he was given has the end sound at the end. And you notice a unique pattern when you look at the rest of these, how when it is spelled with the S sound that is kind of only just talking about him and what he did and all of this. But when you talk about the importance of his name, you get the N sound associated with it. Like for instance, in Romans chapter six, that's the name that we're supposed to be baptized in. In Romans chapter eight, that's the person that was raised from the dead. In Romans chapter 10 and verse nine, where it's talking about confessing with our mouth his name, it doesn't use the other two words, but it uses the one with the N sound on it. So whereas the scripture says there's only one name that you can be saved, it doesn't talk about the J-S-U-S word, but this word that ends in this N sound. So what is this word? What is this name by which we are to be saved? Well, we're looking here at the Greek. And the thing about the Greek is that it used a lot of transliterations. For instance, when we look back at the names given in the genealogy, we see names like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But when we see those names in the Greek, we see transliterations of those names. Like for instance, you see Abraham written there, or Abram, as his Old Testament name was, before it was changed. Well, when you look at the Greek, you see it's just a transliteration. There's the A, the B, that sound there makes the R sound. So there's Abra. You see it? Mm -hmm. Abram. If you look at the other Greek letters, they're going to be your N. So that's a transliteration. Well, that's the same thing with these other words, too. There's Isaac. Well, when you're looking at the Greek, it's just the I, the S, and the X sound. Mm -hmm. With Jacob, you see the I, of course, because the J didn't really exist. So you see the I there. So it's like Jacob. There's the B sound at the end. So it's Jacob. These are all transliterations. Right. My point is, is that when it came to the Messiah's name, it was also a transliteration. Mm -hmm. So if it's a transliteration, then what are the syllables? What are the vowels that make up his name? Right. Do you, do you, can you see them? Can you call them out? The first one is the I and the E, which we've already talked about, makes the Y sound or the Ya sound. The I and the E makes the Ya, Ya, Ya. Mm -hmm. So then you have the S. Shin. Shin. And then you have these vowels, which, of course, there's no vowel sounds in the Hebrew. So you ignore those. So what's the next letter? The N. So you have the three letters that make up his name, Y, S, N. Mm -hmm. That's his name. That would have been his name in the Hebrew. That's what they named him in the Hebrew. Right. Would have been Y, S, N. Mm -hmm. So when we look in the Hebrew to try to find a name with those words, with those uh, uh, a word with those letters, we come up with a few examples, one being Hebrew number 3465, which is Yad, Shin, and Nu, Y, S, N. 
Mm -hmm. So that would have been closer to what his name is. Now, there's other words used, too. That one happens to mean old or ancient. Kind of reminds me of the Ancient of Days. But these are all words that have the name YSN in it. Right. Well, coming back to 3465, which the Yiddish word or the slang word would be Yashan. There's the only two syllables there, Yashan. But we have a three syllable word. So there should be another syllable in there at the end. That's, that's how you know that this is Yiddish or slang word when you have three letters that makes up a two syllable word. That's not supposed to be how it works. You have three letters. It's supposed to be a three syllable word. Well, when we look down at the occurrences, there are six times when Yad, Shin and Nu are used in the Old Testament. But you look, sometimes it's pronounced Yasan, but looks other times it's pronounced. How you pronounce that? Hey, hey, Shan, Na, Nun, Na. Hey, hey, Hashana. Hashana. So there's two times when Yad, Shin, and Nu are pronounced in the Old Testament as Hashana. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the word that they were using when they was calling out the Messiah's name in Matthew 21 and 9 and Matthew 21 and 15. They was crying Hosanna, son of David. Mm -hmm. So this is the word that they were talking about. That's mm -hmm. what they was actually saying. But did it sound like that? Probably not because the letters are Y, not H. So instead of Hasana, it was supposed to be Yasana. So as it turns out, when they were calling out and crying Hosanna in verse 9 of chapter 21 they were actually saying Yosana that's the Messiah's name is Yosana that's what they were saying Yosana son of David Y S N Yosana or Yasana that's what they called him now we got like we said all kinds of transliterations you've heard me use Yasan but that's more Yiddish because it doesn't give credit to the last vowel, the new, and its own syllable. So instead of Yasan, it was supposed to be, it's supposed to be, it is Yasana, Yasana. Yasana. So as far as the Messiah's name, what they actually called them in the streets, this is the only example you have of what the common people actually called him. You see it all throughout Mark and John and everywhere where they cried Hosanna, King of Israel. So whereas we're coming up with all of these other translation iterations and all of these made up words, the actual name they tried to give us in the Bible. And we see it clearly when we start looking at the lyrics of some of the songs that uses this word. Like, for instance, this song by Paul Balachi. Where it says, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. And then this song by Hillsong, which says, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And then you have one of our family favorites, which is, O Magnify the Lord, which is talking about Hosanna being the blessed rock. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. These people in these songs were actually calling his name. That is actually closer to his name. It's not Hosanna, but it's Yosanna. Because of that Y at the beginning. So Yahshua, that's a transliteration. I mean, you understand what people are getting at, but that's not actually his name. Yasan, which you've heard me use plenty of times, is just the Yiddish slang word for it. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Messiah and Christ are all titles when it comes to his name. His name was supposed to be more like Yasana. And, and even though we, we see nobody really using that name to declare his name as Yasana, well, that's 
the importance of this video. You know, this is kind of what we do where we dig out the scripture to find out what was really being used, what word was really being used. Mm -hmm. And it's just Sana. Why? Or Yad, Shin, Na. Y S N. And then as far as the Christ is concerned, there's four times in the Bible we see the word Messiah being used. Two times in the New Testament, chapter uh, one in the book of John, along with chapter four. But we see each time that it's saying that the word Christ is a substitute for Messiah. So anytime you see the word Christ in the Bible, it's only talking about Messiah. Right. Yeah. And then. When you look up that word, you get Mashayak, mm -hmm. or which is a four syllable word. So it should be more like Masayacha or something like that. So his name would be Yashana Mayacha. Seems like we've heard that word before, Mashana, Yashana Mayacha. So I don't know. What do you think? Do you still think it's not important? Yeah, I think it's important. Um... You know, the example that you gave about calling someone within their right names, um, that made sense to me. So, yes, it's important it's, um, to be able to refer to him by his, you know, his correct name. We definitely don't want to refer to him by J-E-S-U-S, -S, but... Um, Only because it's pointing to somebody else. Right, somebody that he's probably, he, well, he's very much opposed to. That would probably be like uh, someone calling you demon or something like that, you know, in contrast to who he is. So, uh, yeah, I think it's very important. Absolutely. So the name that we, when reading scripture, um, we can substitute um, Yosana for when we come up on the word J-E-S-U-S. -S. Yeah, well, like I said, we've been using Yasan. Right. But that's the Yiddish word. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, it doesn't um, account for all three syllables. So, whereas before we've used Yasan, we should be using Yasana. Mm -hmm. Yasana, 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 Yasana. Yasana. Yashana Mashayacha. <laughs> yeah, say that three or four times. Well, you better say it a lot because, like you said, <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be pronounced in the Hebrew. It's supposed to have all of those syllables pronounced. And then when we cut them off, it's, you know, it's like using slang, you know, slang words. That's what Yiddish is, is, is slang words where, you know, we have the right pronunciation of the word and we choose to use other words. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you guys tell me what you think in the comment section. Is there a better name to use than Yashana? Or I should say a more scripturally accurate because, you know, people will always prefer the names that they've been using. But, mm -hmm. you know. We can't really find names like Yeshua in the scripture that says this is his name. There's, you know, ways of coming up with it by saying that he was a savior. So therefore he can have the name Yeshua. But, you know, that's not what they had on paper. That's not the name they gave him. The that's name a, more like a title. That's a title. The name that they called him in the streets. Like it says, as they was walking down the street, they said, hey, there's Yasana. Son of David. King of Israel. Which was in the Bible the whole time. It's been right there in our face. What name they called him. Yeah, I think that's good. Because, you know, a lot of times we, when we read scripture, like you said, we concentrate more on the scholastic part of it. And um, try to focus on something that's much harder than it actually has to be. And we don't necessarily look at what's written right there in front of our eyes. Well, they did do some work to actually hide the name, just like they hid the Messiah's name by changing the letters. They actually put an H sound at the beginning instead of the J sound. So instead of Josiah, 
which somebody would have figured that out. Yod, Shin, and Nu. They would have figured that out from Yasan, from the name that was given in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. They would have put those two together that Yasana is the pronunciation of those three letters, Yod, Shin, and Nu. But we'll do more classes on it. Um, like everything else, we have to learn. Um, but I think one of the things we're learning now is what his rightful name is. Mm -hmm. So anybody who cares can stop calling him by the name of his rival. But anyway, we're going to close this video out. If you got anything out of it, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And with that, we're going to say shalom. Or shalom. Or shalom. <laughs> we're going to get these syllables right one day. Shalom.